What's up everybody, Super Dorks fan here for Mini Weekly Update number 22 on this Friday. So, what's new with the Mini? Well, nothing, uh, it's still just hanging in there, doing well, and another thing that's doing well is the Fund Anything campaign. Thanks to you guys again, you're all just so awesome. Last weekend there was a huge uh, surge in donations again, I think now we're just over $5,200, so uh, a little over you know, $1,000 away from the goal, so and we're getting really close. We still have like 19 days to go, so I mean well over two weeks, and uh, I'm really optimistic. I'm really excited. So yeah, that's exciting. Uh, once again, thank you guys so much. It's totally just blows me away all the time. So uh, yeah, that's all good news, um, but otherwise there's nothing else. Uh, the only thing channel news uh, related is I've uh, been filming some more cool review videos. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be uploading a review video of what possibly could be the first video review of this particular car the way that it is so uh, if, you're, if you're scratching your head uh, I'll say you can go onto the Super fan Facebook page or follow me on Instagram or Twitter um, you know it's at BRZ fan on Instagram Twitter is at Super Dorks fan and uh, you can see a picture of uh, the car that I'm talking about um, but yeah so that'll be sweet I got another requested car that's a more affordable car that I, I think a lot of you guys would enjoy seeing a review of that one's coming and got a couple other cars hopefully in the pipeline here so lots of good stuff comics so definitely stay tuned for that but yeah uh, that's it for all the updates on the channel and the car so i'll send it back to meet the news desk for this week's news right so for this week's news uh the first thing is i want to congratulate jay leno because his uh big youtube show jay leno's garage has officially been picked up by cnbc uh it's going to be called leno's garage and it's going to probably be the same kind of thing it's going to be an hour long though and i'm just obviously he has contacts in nbc but it's very cool to see a YouTube show actually transition to a full-scale, regular TV show. So I just want to congratulate Jay Leno for that. That's awesome. Can't wait to start watching that on CNBC. Next is not really some car news, but it's still very cool. Uh, so you might have seen the Razor scooter, like go car things that drift like crazy. They're for kids, and they're like 400 bucks, but they were like so much fun that adults were obsessed with them too. And so Razor has responded by revealing a Crazy Cart XL, which is large enough for any size adult basically, and it'll still do like 17 miles per hour while sustaining these drifts. And uh, it looks like it's a ton of fun. I'd love to like. Like test one out or review one or something. It'd be really cool. Next is some new confirmed Toyota GT86 news, and uh, we haven't had some of that in a while. So uh, it's been officially released. There's a Toyota GT86. Uh, it's called the 14R-60, which is a lightweight version of the GT86. Has a carbon fiber roof, and basically the entire TRD parts catalog is thrown onto this car has every single thing imaginable. It has uh, some reinforcements, same engine, same horsepower ratings, um, but it does have a reinforced clutch and you know a few other minor little things here and there that a lot of normal people probably couldn't even notice. Uh, but so it's just you know it's only for you know Europe and Japan stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty cool, but according to the exchange rates, if this were to be brought over, which I'm 99% sure it won't be brought over, but even if they did decide to bring this over, the exchange rate right now, this car would be 58 grand. Uh, I mean, it's basically a racer's special, but I mean, anyone can buy, you know, a normal FRS for 25 grand and put five grand into it and have a pretty sweet track car, I think. So. Uh, very, very steep price, and it's obviously limited production, and uh, I think they'd be lucky if they even sold the few that they do make. Next is, uh, there's been some Mercedes spy shots, but the first thing that's been spied, we just had the Paris Motor Show, and that's done and over with. There's really no auto shows coming up in the very near future, um, but there's this crazy looking concept uh, that Mercedes has. It's covered up uh, and it has t skinny little tires, but it's got this very interesting shape to it, very wide, crazy fenders. It, also, it almost reminds me of a Chrysler Airflow, which was a car from the 30s that had a very futuristic teardrop kind of design. And this looks like almost like a modern Airflow to me. Uh, very interesting for sure, and uh, no one knows why they're building it or what auto show it's going to be. No one has any information about this car or what it could possibly be. Even the rumor mills are coming up with nothing. They don't know what to say about this. Uh, totally unex unexpected. 
I don't know, maybe they're building a UFO or something. I don't know what's going on, but that's very interesting to see. Who knows when we'll find out more about it, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> pretty sweet stuff going on at Mercedes apparently. And in some more mundane Mercedes uh, spy shots, uh, there's been uh, some spy shots taken here of the new Mercedes E-Class, which uh, is going to be totally all new and, uh, you know, probably be like a baby S-Class and have the same styling as the new C and the S and everything else has now. The E is the one that's still waiting to get a refresh here, so that should be coming very soon. I uh, can't tell much by the spy shots. There's tons of camo. Even on the headlights, you can very hardly make out anything. Um, but be exciting to see that in the coming months for sure. The last bit of Mercedes news is that uh, they can Mercedes confirmed this week that the AMG GT won't be a one uh, generation deal like the SLS. You know, there's the SLS and that was it. Now they have the AMG GT, but they said that this car will be around for multiple generations and be improved on and things like that, which is good to hear. Um, and so, I mean, it's, you know, the AMG GT seems like a fantastic car, so I'm very excited to, you know, see evolutions of this car over time. Next is there's a report here saying that Jaguar is already considering an XE SVR. So you know how they're saying since you know Land Rover and Range Rover and Jaguar are owned by the same people that this new high spec trim level is going to be called the SVR. They're going to kind of maybe get rid of the R badging and so instead of it being the XER uh, they're going to just call it the SVR version of the XE and they're saying it would obviously compete with the M3 and the C63 which it would be its natural competitors and they're saying it would have supercharged V8 power. Take a wild guess. Jaguar F-Type V8 engine will probably be in this so 500 horsepower and an XE Sounds like a fun time to me, so uh, very excited to see that. Who knows when it'll be coming out, but Jaguar doesn't waste any time with unveiling the hotter versions. I mean, look, when they launched the F-Type, they had three engines right off the bat. With this, they're going to have, you know, two or three as well for the states here. So, uh, you know, I'm sure the SVR isn't too far off, which is very good news to hear. In other luxury car news, uh, another curveball here is Cadillac just confirmed that they're going to have what's called the CT8 or the CT9. So before we thought that the CT6 was going to be the flagship, but they said the CT6 is going to be lighter than the CTS, which made everyone scratch their heads and go, wait a minute, if it's going to be a bigger car, how's it going to be lighter if it's supposed to be their flagship? So maybe the CT6 is actually going to be the CTS, the new version, um, even though the CTS just came out a couple years ago and is fantastic. Um, and this CT8 slash CT9 that's rumored to be in development um, would be an S-Class uh, fighter, but it would be like the long S-Class. So maybe this uh, CT9 is what the spy shots have been taking pictures of recently, you know, the long one. Because uh, there is some long Cadillac that's out there being driven around. Um, so I don't know whether it's a CT6 or CT9. Uh, another thing that Cadillac confirmed this week is that the ELR, which is the Chevy Volt Coupe essentially that Cadillac has that they can't sell if their lives depended on it, they're saying they're going to do a new version of that. Um, they said it probably wouldn't be a coupe because coupes don't sell well apparently and we can see that at least with the ELR so they're going to probably do a sedan so chances are it'll be based heavily on the next generation Chevy Volt that's already uh, you know under development and they'll just do a nicer version for Cadillac so yeah interesting to hear that stuff. And another luxury car news uh, that's big cars Audi's hinting at an A9 flagship that they're going to be debuting at the LA Auto Show. So, again, these uh, alphabet soup at Audi with all the numbers, they just, they're going to fill every single A. They have the A1, the A2, A3, A4, they're going to go all the way through, all the way up to the A9. So, uh, by the year 2020, my guess is we'll be, we'll be up to A20 or something <laughs> instead. It's, it's crazy. They just keep outdoing themselves with bigger and crazier cars. So the A9 will probably be like the A8, but have the body shape of the A7 maybe, but just be bigger. Because apparently I guess the A8's too small for some people. I don't know. It's uh, not really understanding uh, why Audi would make a car like this, but... Uh, if the A8 isn't grand enough for you, good news, you're going to have the A9 pretty soon. So, uh, interesting to see. They just, they teased uh, just one little overhead shot. It's kind of hard to make anything out from it, uh, but it'll be very interesting to uh, see what they come up with. And some uh, more puzzling Audi news. Uh, there, it looks like, based on these spy shots, they're rating a final edition of the R8. So, the new generation R8 that's based on the Uricon is going to be coming out very soon. And 
So, but it looks like they're they're developing some kind of you know previous gen R8 here that's got a crazy huge wing on the back and some very aggressive wheels and things. Uh, so probably one last hurrah, you know, milking every last sale that they can, kind of like how Lamborghini did with Agardo with all these millions of limited editions and stuff. I'm guessing that Audi's doing the same kind of technique here, and uh, so yeah, probably the last hurrah for the current Gen R8. I think everyone's just anxious for the new one at this point, but uh, cool to see that they're going to be doing a last final version. Right, so and then there's some news from Tesla this past week that came out right on Friday and I missed it in last week's update. I'm going to touch on it this week, and that is the they officially unveiled what's going on with this Tesla Model S D, and it's for P85D, and so what the D has is it has all-wheel drive and has an extra motor to power those front wheels, and so uh, this car is insane. Uh, it has basically 3.2 seconds here to 60 now for the D version, and uh, I, my guess was actually right. They actually nailed autonomous driving, and I don't think too many people were expecting that, uh, but I knew that they could do something like this, and they just uploaded a demonstration video. Actually, Kelly Blue Book uploaded a video of their ride-along in in the uh, Model S D and basically this car whenever well not only does it take off and I mentioned this in the Facebook post uh, this past week too so if you're on the Facebook uh, Super Rich Fan Facebook page then you probably already saw this video but I'll link the annotation here to go watch it but basically uh, this car will just take off like it's you know a roller coaster ride and it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds and then you know as they go on to this handling course the car actually when you t hit the uh, lane change you know for uh, it'll make your lane changes for you so you just hit the turn signal stock and it'll automatically make the lane change for you if it sees that it's clear and safe to do so and it'll see the speed limit signs and it'll go to the speed limit automatically and if the speed limit increases or decreases it'll change itself on its own and uh, of course it'll also stop if it sees the car in front of you stopping and it's just it also steers obviously keeps lanes for you and everything and this is I mean it's really pretty advanced it does just about everything for you at this point it's really cool technology uh, you know for boring commutes and stuff this will be a godsend uh, but you know obviously it's nice that you can still drive and hopefully will continue to be able to drive for a long time and still have that option but at least for the people that don't want to drive you'll have a you know much more attentive computer doing it instead and you know following all the road rules and not driving crazy and uh, I think overall you know it'd be good because then it'll filter out the people that do want to drive and actually want to you know do it well will be the ones that will be able to enjoy it and do it and everyone else that doesn't care about driving instead of them being forced to drive terribly You'll have all of them doing everything in the right-hand lane, just chilling while they're on Facebook. They can sit there and, you know, watch these YouTube videos in their car and not pay any attention to what's going on around them. And those of us that want to drive will have the left lanes clear and just go for it. <laughs> I think overall it's actually going to be a bright future for automotive enthusiasts, as long as they still give us the option to let us drive ourselves. Um, but, you know, with the autonomous truck that Mercedes has been coming out with, you know, they're trying to develop for uh, big rigs. If we can keep them in the right lane with autonomous, you know, computers driving them, have everyone that doesn't want to be driving a car have their autonomous cars so they don't have to worry about driving, it's just going to be us car guys that are going to be out there just hammering the roads. It's going to be great, I think, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for autonomous cars. I really am, actually. So, uh, very cool to see Tesla leading the way in that. And uh, lots of other car companies are getting very close to it as well. So, uh, exciting times for sure. Back to some normal car news. Uh, there's a funny story this week that uh, Porsche's boss in an interview admitted that the Panamera's styling isn't the best and that it could be improved. So, so I think everyone's kind of conceded at this point that while the Porsche Panamera is a very good handling car and it's very impressive from an engineering standpoint, it's you know not the prettiest car out there. And uh, so I think that you know, they're definitely going to go back to the drawing board for the Panamera for the next generation that is probably going to come out eventually and uh, you know really give this car a good overhaul and make it a really beautiful car like all the other Porsches that are out there. Another interesting story this week is that Acura is considering making all of their cars standard all-wheel drive because they want to mimic Subaru's success. I think everyone wants to copy Subaru's success. They're one of the 
top sellers every month. They've been growing by leaps and bounds. They went from this niche little car maker to now being this huge car company that you know everyone's driving around in uh, Foresters and stuff. It's crazy. Uh, it's great though. I'm a super diverse fan. I love seeing them do well. And so I think Acura's kind of trying to uh, cash in on this because while Subarus you know, are nice and the new Legacy and stuff is fairly luxurious, uh, you know, if you want to step up to something that costs more than $35,000 there's nowhere to spend your money basically in a Subaru and so I think Acura wants to take that place and say hey once you get tired of your thirty thousand dollar Subaru if you want to move up to a forty or fifty grand Acura we have standard all-wheel drive too I think that's kind of the thinking they're having behind this is they want to be like Subaru except be so whenever you are done with Subaru you can graduate into Acura I think that's kind of their thinking uh, which is smart I think uh, I think Subaru definitely has room for a flagship at this point now that uh, they could move up to a more luxurious car I think especially with their rapid growth uh, I think that they have a lot more space for more SUVs and you know larger cars so uh, but it's interesting to see that Acura may go all all-wheel drive I think that'd be really cool another interesting car that's mimicking Subaru this is becoming a theme it seems Fiat is uh, planning you know they at the Paris Auto Show they debuted the 500X um, which is basically like the 500L that has some body cladding on it and lifted up a little bit. Sounds a lot like the uh, you know Subaru Impreza Cross Trek, you know the XV Cross Trek, which is just an Impreza lifted up, and the Subaru Outback, which is a Subaru Legacy that's on stilts. Uh, that's all these. SUVs are cars that are have some aggressive styling on them and anyway so Fiat's planning on doing a 500X Abarth as well as the standard X so you know they'll have a performance version so I think Subaru XV Crosstrek with the WX motor sounds like a pretty cool package and I think Fiat's thinking ahead of the curve here and so I don't know if Subaru's gonna wise up and do an XV Crosstrek turbo or anything they should but uh, it's cool to see that uh, you know Fiat's already playing in a Barth version. They want to do a Barth on everything because over in Europe they have a Barth everything. You know all the Fiat cars have a Barth versions basically, and so uh, I think it'd be great to see more Barth variants here in the States. The last two stories are of some insane cars. The first is that there's a new Ariel Atom out, and this one has the 2.4 liter uh, Honda motor, but it's been turbocharged and has insane horsepower. It does zero to sixty in 2.9 seconds, and it's just an insane performer. Obviously, Ariel. Atoms are always insane, even the most mild versions are just bonkers, and so uh, very sweet to see that they're working on this new version that's uh, already released. And the last thing is, uh, you know, this past week Ferrari took over Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, California for uh, their 60th anniversary birthday party, basically. And uh, there they released the Ferrari F60 America. And uh, it's a very cool limited edition 10 unit car. Uh, it's basically an F12 that has some reworked styling and it's convertible. Uh, 730 horsepower, still like the F12. And uh, I think it looks really pretty. I actually had a friend that was at the event and he sent me some cell phone videos that I'll be uploading here uh, over the next week of event you know videos from this event so stay tuned I'll have a video of the F60 up very soon but uh, it looks like a really cool car and uh, I mean we'll probably never see one in our lifetimes because we're only making 10 of them but uh, very cool to see that uh, Ferrari is doing these limited editions and this one's only for America so that's very cool as well so yeah that's it for all the news this week guys so I'll send it back to me in the car Alright, so I'll leave you guys with a nice little acceleration here, like I always do. <laughs> Still gets up and goes pretty well. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next week, take care.